One of the questions I get a lot as a biblical scholar and theologian is, what would happen to people's faith if there was proof, genuine proof, really incontrovertible proof of an extraterrestrial reality? What would that really change for people? Uh, this question was actually one of the centerpiece elements to my novel, The Facade. Uh, could Christianity really accommodate a genuine extraterrestrial reality or a disclosure? The question is actually pretty old, even though we kind of think that it might be a modern one because you know, space travel, the whole question of you know, aliens and alien visitation seems to be new to us. But it actually goes back centuries and even millennia. As far as our current day, when it comes to the church, really the church's perspective, or even people's perspective about how the believing church would act, uh, there are, have been three surveys that sort of kind of steer the discussion. One is the Brookings Report that was done in 1960. Uh, this was a, an official report uh, done in the Beltway in the D.C. area, and it was really about the implications of peaceful space activities on human affairs. That's the way it was cast. But in the survey, there was discussion about, hey, you know, what if we run across proof in our own space program, uh, through that program, that there was intelligent extraterrestrial life out there? And the Brookings Report had a negative conclusion. It really, you know, was pretty, pretty dire. You know, it, it was pretty, uh, pretty depressing, actually. It concluded that, for sure, disclosure would have very disruptive effects on human society. And so Brookings became kind of a touch point for a negative view of contact. Now, a few decades later, something called the Alexander UFO Religious Crisis Survey was conducted. This was around 1994. And that actually reached a more positive conclusion. The focus was religious people, mainline denominations mostly. Uh, Christianity, Judaism, uh, even Islam, uh, and, and that report really sort of produced the answer, well, not so much. You know, most people of faith, this really wouldn't rattle them. And that was followed by another survey in 2008, the Peters ETI, which stands for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, the Peters ETI Religious Crisis Survey, and that kind of, you know, proposed the same thing, that this really wouldn't be that big of a deal. Now. In my own opinion, I don't think that the surveys really address the most pressing question because it really doesn't target the people who would actually tend to be the most rattled by this. And that is what we might call conservative Christians or Jews. Uh, Jews that would, you know, take the Torah, again, as, you know, the inspired word of God, every word of it, and, and you know, be really, you know, closely conservative in following uh, the content of the Torah, the same way that for Christians they might call themselves Bible believers. Again, very literalistic in their approach. The Alexander survey, the Peters survey, doesn't really target those kinds of people, those kinds of Christians. Uh, they, they really target kind of mainliners, which tend to be theologically kind of liberal. So I would question the results of this, and it, frankly I think the it really would cause problems with certain Christians if there was a genuine ET reality, but it doesn't have to. It would cause problems because there are some people, you know, who would look at the Bible and say things like, hey, if it's not in the Bible, it can't be real. Uh, the Bible is, a, is an exhaustive, accurate record of everything that's, you know, happened or really needs to be thought about when it comes to creation, who humans are, and what life is. Uh, some would say that, hey, if there are aliens out there, then that kind of makes the image of God kind of pointless. Uh, it, you know, humans wouldn't be unique anymore. Uh, what about, you know, would Jesus have to go die on, on that other planet where those aliens were and in, be incarnate there and, uh, you know, do something like the cross for their salvation? You know, questions like that come up. And some people would just say, well, you know, I, I don't really want there to be aliens because they must just be demons or something like that.